Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC NPTEL course on Bioengineering and Interface with Biology and Medicine. So, today we are going to talk about cell cycle and in which way cell cycle dysregulation uh, may cause diseases like cancer. We are going to talk about why mitosis is so important, why meiosis is central to reproduction. We are also going to look into various factors internal and external factors which regulate cell cycle. We are going to talk about the difference into the normal and cancer cells and what is the you know, basic molecular biology research in which we have started investigating uh, about the cell and its properties to try to find some clues for cancer. Let us first start with cell cycle. So, as you can see the life begins from a single cell uh, starting from the sperm and uh, egg cell their fusion in the process of fertilization that give rise to the embryo and from embryo uh, the from the one cell now after the continuous division the life starts. The cell division distributes the DNA of a mother cell equally between two daughter cells uh, therefore, it allows a cell to proliferate. Uh, this cell proliferation is, is very crucial for the growth, repair and the reproduction process. So, what is the cellular organization of the genetic material? So, if you think about broadly uh, a genome actually that consists of the entire DNA molecules uh, in case of eukaryotic cells and if you think about prokaryotic cell context it is a single DNA molecule. Now, let us also get some definition for uh, somatic cell. These are the normal body cells non reproductive cells which contains two set of chromosomes whereas, the gametes they are the reproductive cells which are uh, especially sperms and eggs and they contain half as many chromosomes as the somatic cells. So, let us now talk about cell cycle. In the cell cycle uh, the mitotic phase alternates with a large uh, growth phase which is interphase. Now, uh, this entire cell cycle could be divided into multiple uh, phases. Uh, let us let, let me go to board and, and uh, draw you the cell cycle. All right, so, the cell cycle uh, one of the phases of the cell cycle is known as uh, G 1 phase and then we have uh, S phase and G 2 phase and then we have a short mitosis phase. The mitosis phase is much smaller, but rest of the part which is essentially the interface or the growth phase uh, that is much bigger phase. right? So, uh, the entire mitosis process uh, which is going to uh, be responsible for cell division to happen that is actually much shorter phase, but remaining phase which you can see that is the known as interphase that is much larger phase. So, this is interphase which prepared the cell and ensures that now cell is ready for division to happen. So, the mitotic phase alternates with much longer interphase and it is almost 90 percent of the uh, overall cell cycle which uh, comes as a part of the interphase. Now, the G phase names actually comes a uh, uh, little uh, misnamed uh, especially the gaps, but these are not the gaps these are actually quite crucial for cell to prepare and G 1 phase ensures that all the uh, you know the uh, nucleic acid contains the chromatins that sufficient present and then now cell is ready for DNA replication to happen in the S phase. And then the uh, G 2 phase is there which now ensures that the, the, the DNA replication has occurred properly and cell is ready for further division to happen in the mitotic phase. So, now the same concept you can see in the slide uh, that we have uh, G 1 S and G 2 phase. Uh, the G 1 phase is first part of the interphase, S phase is where the chromosomes uh, get duplicated. The G 2 phase is last part of the interphase and M phase is where the mitotic division happens and this process distributes the chromosomes to the daughter nuclei. 
in the process of cytokinesis then the cytoplasm get divided from the uh, in the two daughter cells and now the two cells contain uh, you know the same cytoplasm and now they have a bifurcation uh, from the parent cell. So, let us look at broadly the mitosis and meiosis processes. In case of mitosis the division of somatic cells happen whereas, the meiosis governs the division of gametes especially the sperm and the ova. Uh, in mitosis the two daughter cells uh, which are produced they contain the same amount of DNA as the mother cell. In case of meiosis four daughter cells are produced which contains half the amount of DNA as the mother cell. Let us first start uh, discussing about mitosis and why mitosis is so important. So, think about all our uh, you know the growth requirement uh, many times if uh, you know the old cells uh, get replaced old cells get replenished uh, the damaged cell has to be uh, repaired and you know new cells has to be produced all this only happens because of the process of mitosis uh, which is the process in which the cell divides to form two identical daughter cells. Let us first talk about few basic terminologies uh, before we actually talk about uh, the mitosis process. So, for example, in the blue color on the left side you can see a pair of sister chromatids are there and then we have uh, this uh, DNA which is uh, hidden behind this you know the protein complexes that region is known as centromere and the protein which is uh, surrounding to that is kinetochore which is the protein attached to the, uh, the centromere region. And uh, this chromosome uh, has the pair of sister chromatids. So, you know the two chromatids are shown in the uh, blue colors. Now, let us think about uh, you know a cell which is having uh, three chromosomes each from father and mother. Let us say the maternal set or the mother uh, uh, obtained chromosomes are shown in the red color and the blue one is shown from the father. So, the 2 n or the ploidy level is 6 chromosomes in this case. Uh, so, each chromosome is having uh, these sister chromatids uh, which whether it is in the blue ones or the red ones uh, which are connected with the centromere. And now when they form the homologous pair that is you know the two uh, the both the blue ones and the red chromosomes comes together that is the uh, chromatids from the non sister uh, chromatids of the homologous pairs are being formed. Or you can say that you know these are pair of homologous chromosomes from both uh, one from each of the paternal maternal sets uh, is shown in the uh, circle here. Uh, you know another interesting fact is that how DNA uh, uh, is so uh, you, know, uh, you know so much DNA content is present, but how it is so tightly packed in the nucleus of every cell in a such a short space. Uh, so, it is not only DNA, but you know in addition to DNA there are uh, separate histone proteins which are also attached to the DNA molecules and these uh, you know eight histone proteins along with the DNA molecules they form a complex which is nucleosomes. And these you know the uh, fiber of these packed nucleosomes uh, that is known as chromatins. And these chromatins they get condensed before the process of mitosis starts. So, in the in the image shown here is uh, you know various histone protein like histone H1, uh, we have histone H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. Uh, and you can see that how eight histone proteins are uh, you know packed up and forming the nucleosome uh, and many of these nucleosomes together will form the overall uh, chromatins. So, let us have the broad overview of mitosis process first. Uh, so, thinking about you know again the overall cell cycle uh, we have this mitotic phase and we have the interphase. Now, within mitos mitotic phase then there are you know, different phases involved. For example, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Let us go each one of them in slightly more detail one by one. So, uh, first let us look at uh, you know thinking about this nuclear uh, content, they are getting condensed and then they are forming the chromatins, right. So, that is what is shown in the blue color here. Uh, the sister chromatids are being formed and chromatin, the condensed material, is forming now the discrete chromosomes. And during this process, the nucleoli get disappeared from the cell. So, each chromosome appears as two sister uh, chromatids and they are actually joined at the centromere. Now, then at the same time the centrosomes they move apart and the mitotic spindle uh, starts to form. 
Now, you can see this particular electron microscopy image, uh, which kind of you know uh, show that how people make observations in the actual research looking at the cell images and that is what is then drawn in the cartoon form. Now, let us move on to the next phase which is pro metaphase. Now, cell is trying to uh, prepare itself for division to happen and start orienting it toward the two poles and that is the time when now nuclear membrane starts fragmenting and the microtubules they start growing. Then each of the two chromatids uh, which have the kinetochore proteins at the centromere. Now, this microtubules get attached to those kinetochores and they are known as the kinetochore microtubules. So, again you know lot of shuffling is happening in the cell uh, all these uh, you know the chromosomes and these chromatids from these chromosomes they start trying to align uh, themselves towards the uh, meta metaphase plate which is just in the center, uh, but they have still not aligned they are trying to you know align themselves, but then the cell moves to the next phase which is metaphase. Now, at this time the chromosomes they get assembled at the metaphase plate which is the equidistant between the uh, two spindle poles. If you think about from two spindle poles the, the, the from the top then just in the center that equidistant region is where the metaphase plate is formed. So, each chromosome sister chromatids they are actually attached to the microtubules which are arising from opposite poles. Now, you can see the same in the microscopic image. Alright, so now let us move on to anaphase. Uh, during the anaphase the sister chromatids they separate and now each chromatid they behave as a chromosome. So, during this process things are not so straightforward uh, you know a set of protein the complex proteins are involved especially the cohesins they help in the process of cleavage and then the daughter chromosomes they move towards the opposite poles. Now, a similar uh, you know concept now can be seen in the microscopic image on the screen. So, then the, uh, the last part comes which is the telophase and then the cytokinesis happens. So, for example, two daughter nuclei form uh, in the cell now the nuclear envelope is start reappearing because they want to now produce two daughter cells. Uh, the spindle microtubules they get depolymerized and then the chromosomes becomes less condensed at this time and at the same time now the karyokinesis process or division of nucleus also gets completed. So, the microscopic image shows you that now uh, you know from uh, one cell now the two cells started uh, you know appearing although the distinct boundaries are still not made and that happens in the process of cytokinesis. So, at the process of cytokinesis the uh, cell furrows being formed and now the division of cytoplasm gives rise to two daughter cells. So, now let us kind of you know review the whole thing again uh, we talked about prophase, we talked about pro uh, metaphase, then metaphase, anaphase, telophase and cytokinesis. So, uh, this complete the you know uh, how from one cell the two daughter cells are being produced having the same nuclear contents uh, and that kind of you know ensured that you know body is growing there is a sufficient development is happening. Uh, now, let us move on to another uh, important process which is meiosis. So, what is meiosis and why meiosis is important. So, so think about you know if the cells are uh, dividing and uh, you know the the in the in the case of meiosis if the numbers of the chromosomes are getting reduced half uh, and if the process is so mechanical then every offspring from the same parents will look exactly same right. So, if you know let us imagine that you know there are four children from uh, from in one family. So, from the same father mother then they will uh, look exactly same, but they, there is actually a lot of genetic variation. So, question is from where this genetic variability comes. So, the ability to uh, generate these kind of genetic variations in the children because the process of meiosis happens randomly and at that time lot of gene shuffling happens across the chromosomes and that actually uh, you know ensure that each one of us is very unique in our appearance, in our identity, in our entire genetic components. So, meiosis is very central to the reproduction process and if you look at the, the cell here uh, we have you know starting from the sperm and the uh, ova which is produced inside the testis the sperm and inside the ovary uh, these uh, eggs are being produced. Now, these are haploids shown in the green color uh, after fertilization process they form the diploid zygote which is now the 2 n. So, uh, what we can see we can see the ploidy level here that you know one phase is having haploid level and now the, the other part when after the fertilization and the mitosis and development which happens that is the diploid level. Now, the multicellular diploid adults are being formed which are having 2 n equals to 46 chromosomes. 
So, uh, let us now move on to meiosis, but uh, considering the, the time uh, constraint and thinking about you know what is so crucial for you to understand, let us not talk the entire meiosis process in detail, but rather try to compare and see the what are the salient features which are different in meiosis as compared to mitosis. So, mitosis we have talked in some detail and you have some uh, good idea now. We will now compare that what are the key differences of mitosis and meiosis. So, for example, uh, in meiosis uh, as opposed to mitosis there are two divisions happens meiotic 1 and meiotic 2. Now, meiosis 1 having certain peculiarity, but meiosis 2 is exactly like the mitosis. So, now let us take the same parent cell which we you know took in the beginning for the uh, definitions purpose uh, which has the 3 red and 3 of the blue chromosome from maternal and paternal sets. Now, let us uh, review again the mitosis process. For example, the chromosome duplication happened. Now, you can see these you know the condensed uh, these chromatids uh, on the left side in the prophase uh, 3 uh, blue ones and 3 red ones. Now, uh, these duplicated chromosomes they are forming 2 sister uh, chromatids. Then uh, after the pro metaphase and the metaphase, now these individual chromosomes get lined up at the metaphase plate which is equidistance from the uh, spindle poles. And now in the process of anaphase and telophase, they, uh, the division happens and now two daughter cells are produced which are having 2 n exactly the same like sex chromosomes where you started right. That is what the, the left side of the image conveys uh, which re refreshes your understanding for mitosis. Now, let us try to compare a uh, few things in the meiosis. So, in meiosis now uh, as you can see the blue and red chromosomes they are you know having some sort of interaction and in certain region there is a crossing over happens. So, this crossing over uh, is known as the chiasma which is the site of crossing over and that is the time when you know some of the genes start getting shuffled from the blue to the red ones. So, from the maternal and paternal side now we have few few genes which are going to shuffle to both the chromosomes. And now these homologous chromosomes they are actually you know uh, pairing and they are still held together uh, by the chiasma and now the sister chromatids uh, by the cohesin proteins. So, uh, this entire thing is slightly different as compared to what you see in the pro phase of the mitosis. So, let me highlight you know the three distinguishing feature here which makes uh, meiosis more unique. The very first one was the uh, crossing over or the formation of chiasma. Now, these uh, homologous pair of the chromosomes they, they are uh, itself moving and they are forming the uh, metaphase plate when they are actually you know uh, getting lined up at the metaphase plate. So, in this case now not the individual chromosome, but rather the pair of the homologous chromosome they are uh, reaching to the metaphase plate metaphase 1. And then now these homologs they get separated uh, when the anaphase 1 and the uh, telophase 1 processes are happening and therefore, now the daughter cells which are produced they are having the you know uh, both red and blue patterns together right. And then further uh, once you have finished your meiosis 1 then the entire process is uh, you know of mitosis getting uh, replicated and on meiosis 2 you are going to produce uh, 4 cells out of 2 cells. So, then you have daughter cells of meiosis 2 which are 4 cells now and uh, n becomes half. So, you have only 3 chromosomes. But each of the three chromosomes as you can see you do not have very clear red or very clear blue you have the patches of red and blue which means the genes have shuffled and the genetic variability has been introduced. So, to just summarize the first part of the uh, lecture uh, we have first you know try to understand the cell cycle broadly uh, the very small part of mito mitotic phase which is so crucial and how the cell divide to form uh, the two identical daughter cells. Uh, we have also tried to uh, understand that uh, how meiosis generates the genetic variability in the offsprings. And now, I think we are going to uh, continue our understanding about the cell cycle, but more in the context of its regulation, dysregulation and how the disease like cancer may, may happen. So, now let us talk about the cell cycle uh, regulation, deregulation and uh, how disease like cancer may, may happen. First, let us look at the cell cycle checkpoints. Uh, just imagine that you know whether the cell cycle is being operated uh, you want certain you know checkpoints to ensure that the entire cell cycle is governed properly. Just imagine that you know when you are driving on a road you need those kind of you know the uh, speed breakers you need the uh, traffic police to ensure that everybody is obeying those uh, you know rules uh, otherwise you know uh, sometimes things may go unattended and accidents may happen right. So, like that there are certain checkpoints even in the cell 
and uh, there is no police inside the cell. So, there are certain you know proteins which are uh, following the same pattern of what you, you know to regulate these particular signals. So, the cell cycles are actually uh, having the checkpoints which are constituted by the proteins uh, which regulate cell cycle by giving uh, either a stop or go ahead signals. Uh, then there are different you know checkpoints involved for example, uh, even in the G 1 phase there is a checkpoint uh, or a section point uh, which ensures that now the you know the chromatin material is sufficient the cells are you know getting condensed with those nuclear contents and it is getting ready to move to the S phase for DNA replication to happen. Then there is a G 2 checkpoint which now ensures that now cell is totally ready for the mitotic division to happen and then M you know mitotic checkpoint is there or the M checkpoint is there which ensures that the mitotic division has happened properly. So, as you can see there are different checkpoints which are involved to ensure this process is happening sufficiently. Now, how these things uh, uh, happen? So, uh, as I already mentioned the, the G 1 phase the parental DNA strands are intact before DNA replication begins. So, the G 1 phase checkpoint ensures that this process is done properly. Then the G 2 checkpoint it ensures that newly synthesized DNA strands they are complete and intact before the mitotic process to happen. And then in the metaphase plate uh, the M, uh, M phase checkpoint the chromosomes are aligned properly at the metaphase plate before the anaphase happens. So, this is kind of you know various checkpoints which are so essential for the correct distribution of complete chromosome set between two daughter cells. Now, let us think about you know this entire intricate process which is so complicated how it is being governed by certain proteins right. So, a set of proteins known as cyclins and a cyclin dependent kinases they play an important role to govern these processes. Let us now go back and uh, in our cell cycle diagram. Now, let us draw that you know how these proteins you know where they are being synthesized all right. So, uh, the cyclin proteins are synthesized uh, in the S phase right and now they are getting accumulated as they are moving into the, the, the G 2 phase uh, and then at that time they are interacting with uh, C D K s or cyclin dependent kinases to form a complex which is C D K and cyclin complex. Now, this ensures now that you know cell is now ready to move for the entry in the mitotic process. Now, once the mitosis is, is finished then the uh, cyclins get uh, degraded and now uh, you know the uh, this complex get dissociated now the C D K that separate and cyclins got degraded. So, this ensure that now the mitotic process has finished. So, in this way just by using uh, you know these proteins uh, cell is ensuring that this particular cell cycle is governed properly. So, let us look at this in, in this diagram now the synthesis of cyclins happens in the uh, S phase. Uh, now, the cyclins are getting accumulated and then the cyclins are forming a complex with C D K s. Then they are allowing the cell to enter in the uh, mitotic process and then the degradation of cyclins happen and C D K s get dissociated which ensures now the cell has completed that particular uh, part. So, this now uh, moves the cell into the G 1 phase. Uh, so, these are the family of cyclins and C D K s which are you know very crucial for cell cycle regulation and these C D K s or cyclin dependent kinases they are expressed throughout the cell cycle. However, they are activated only after when they are bound to the cyclins which could be synthesized uh, during the S phase and gets accumulated in the G 2 phase. As I mentioned that cyclins get degraded after metaphase and now the cell enters in the G 1 phase. So, in addition to these uh, there are you know various external signals which also regulate cell cycle. So, uh, what could be you know some of the internal signals and external signals I think let us let us uh, uh, discuss about them. So, for example, nutrients growth factors uh, even space and the substrates uh, all of these things are also ensuring in which way cell cycle is regulated. So, just imagine that you know nutrients and growth factors are of course, you know crucial for the uh, cell cycle to operate, but uh, even otherwise you know even the space can be constrained like you know how much space is available if it is too crowded and there is not much you know space then cell should ideally stop dividing and that is a process known as density dependent inhibition because there is not enough space now for more cells to grow. And that is where you know the difference comes to uh, a controlled growth versus uncontrolled growth. In case of normal cells now normal cell will stop uh, growing when they see this kind of density has been achieved then density dependent inhibition is happening. 
Whereas, in case of cancer cell, they are not going to get affected, they are not going to obey this rule and they are keep continuing to grow and they are then going to form the tumor mass. Now, additionally, these uh, cells are going to attach to certain environments, certain substrates uh, for their anchoring and that is known as anchorage dependence, uh, you know, way for growing the cells. So, again uh, this part is not being obeyed by the uh, cells in case of the cancer cells. So, now let us look at uh, what happens in case of the cancer cell which they lose dependence on the internal and the external uh, signals for the proliferation. So, cancer cell they do not obey the normal rules for the cell cycle, they will not stop at the cell cycle checkpoints, they will not exhibit any kind of density dependent inhibition and therefore, they will form the lump, the, the tumor mass with the multiple layer of the cells. They do not require any anchorage with a specific substrates to uh, to get attached and uh, you know uh, therefore, they can actually uh, grow much happily on any uh, environment and now they can uh, you know also they are uncontrolled in growth, they are not obeying the cell cycle checkpoint. So, therefore, they are actually uh, uh, you know in, in, in some way they are not at all following the normal cell cycle rules. So, there are a couple of food for thoughts uh, from a journal uh, which shows here that you know how do healthy cells become cancerous and these are still uh, an area for research. We have to still think about why the cell growth is problem in cancer, uh, how long do cancer cells live for, why are the cancer cells so powerful. So, uh, I do not have time to, to talk about each one of these points, I will give you reference I think you should read this paper and you should try to understand that you know how much challenge we have still in science and, and to do research in this area, we have still not understood uh, these cell properties so much. Why do not cancer cells die normally, why we cannot control them, what are the missing checkpoints in these uh, cancers and how do cancer cells they escape destruction. So, all of these are the food for thought for you and I think you have some reference to read, but there is still too much uh, research to be done in these area. Now, what is important again to emphasize that there is so much need for you to know the basic biology, but also implement that at the technology level that we need uh, detection technologies, accurate detection technologies to you know uh, detect the cancer cells early. So, there is a lot of emphasis on looking at even circulating tumor cells uh, with the new detection technologies and in the United States Food and Drug Administration, the USFDA, they have cleared some technologies for uh, which allows you know very sensitive capture of uh, circulating tumor cells, uh, which is looking at you know certain antibodies against the uh, EPCAM or epithelial cell addition molecules, uh, which are coated with certain uh, ferrofluids. Uh, I am showing you again from a from a review article, uh, two different approaches here, one is immunocytological technologies and second is the molecular based technologies. Uh, in which way by looking at certain markers, some of the proteins uh, which, which are found in these tumor cells uh, and an antibody generated against them, how this understanding, this knowledge could be utilized to build the devices which could detect the circulating tumor cells ahead of time and much more accurately. So, these kind of you know technologies will be required. I am again going to give you a reference to read this paper uh, and not talking in detail right now, but just illustrate that basic understanding, basic science is revealing the right targets, the right proteins against which the antibodies could be generated and then the technologists have to come into the play to find out a way to develop the devices, the detection system which could accurately detect these cells and is there a way now just imagine the challenge for you, can we now you know uh, uh, if out of you know uh, let us say you know, 1000 uh, cells, one of the cell is showing you the, the tumor behavior, can you you know uh, with any kind of magnetic property, can you exclude that out from the normal cells. So, then can we now control the cancer if we are having these kind of technologies which can detect the tumor cells, which can also exclude them out of the normal cell circulation. These are the challenges for us, but I think in an area which, which needs lot of exciting research. So, in, in, in general uh, today uh, in conclusions we have discussed about uh, broadly about the cell cycle and uh, you know various you know mitotic and meiotic phases, the kind of contrasting features of mitosis and meiosis, uh, different uh, internal and external factors which govern the cell cycle. Uh, I just trying to kind of convey you the some basic differences between normal and the cancer cells uh, and I am sure you know you appreciate that there is lot of fundamental research going on to look into various type of you know the uh, gene, uh, mRNA and protein level changes in normal and cancer cells to find out the right marker proteins 
which could uh, you know lead us to find out the good detection technology to detect the tumor cells. And I have shown you a couple of you know food for thought, some challenging questions in the area of cancer biology and also some of the promising technology which are coming forward which could be very helpful uh, in the translational research in future. Thank you very much.